Hello and welcome back to Stuart Thomas Media and another episode of Stu's Reviews. So today we're going to take a look at the Mi Band 2 by a company called Xiaomi. Now you may have seen me do another review of a Xiaomi product which you can find here and that is the Smart Scales by them which I really loved so I'm hoping this fitness tracker by them is going to be pretty good. So let's take a look. Well, the packaging is normal. Um, there's nothing super special to say about it. It is a white box with the Mi Band on the front. It's quite small, uh, feels quite compact, it's quite solid, um, feels quite premium. So if you're gonna buy this as a gift, it'd probably be quite good. On the inside, you presented with the face of the band, which is detachable like the other ones have done. But have a look on here, and that's where you'd find the cables and so on, and that's enough of that. So the style, what do I think of the style? Well, the style, I think, is a lovely piece of kit. Um, it's very sleek, very light. It is quite thin. Um, I prefer slightly chunkier bands, but you can't ask for anything. It is a fitness tracker, after all, and it is supposed to stay out of the way. Now, the uh, face is detachable as well. So you can remove it and you can change the bands to, I've seen metal ones, leather ones, different colored uh, sports bands. And this is how you charge it as well. So you remove it and charge it by uh, plugging the face into the charger. But overall, I think the style is quite nice. Let's have a quick close up. So we can see it's of a normal design. Um, like I said, it's a very thin band, uh, which is okay in some respects, but doesn't necessarily suit myself. Um, it's only got one clasp as well, so I'm not sure how durable that will be, although over the past few weeks it's been absolutely fine for myself. Um, one of the massive benefits of this, though, is the screen. I think the quality is wonderful, so if I just tap this here, screen comes on. It seems very sharp. Um, I don't know if it's a, a particular type of screen or anything, other than just a standard sort of LED one, but it looks really nice. So we can see here it's the time. Uh, this little button cycles through different options. And it all, it's all accompanied with nice little graphics and little um, sort of transitions between the different settings and different information bits you can see on the display. And like I said earlier, this pops out. So you've simply just got the band on its own, which is very small, very, very light. Um, uh, so I think it's actually not bad, really. Functionality. Is it any good? Well, it says it does all of the things normal fitness trackers do. Tracks your steps, your sleep, how many fats you've burnt throughout the day. Uh, it tracks your heart rate and it measures this all and keeps it in the Me app. Let's take a look at that now. Now this is the Me app. Straight away you're greeted with information that the device has uh, recorded about you. You can see in the center it shows how many steps I've done today, which is not very many. All honesty, I haven't actually been wearing it that much today at all. But if you tap in the middle circle, we can get more information about your step history. Also going, oh, it's starting to sink. Also going down, we've got things like weight, um, which syncs with um, the me scales I linked to at the very beginning of this. You've got heart rate, which shows um, how consistent your heart rate is. So that is the Me app. Now I think it's a lovely app that's very crisp, very clear, very clean, and it also syncs up with things like Apple Health, so you can keep all of your health data together. Now, it, does it actually function? That is the question we need to answer. Now I tested this against a couple other devices. Now this is what I found. On the left, I was using a GPS tracker and Strava, which showed I did one mile. In the middle, we've got the Mi Band, which says I did 1.39 miles. So that is 0.39 over. And on the right, we've got the Apple Watch, which says I did 0.23 over what the GPS said. Now, there could be a very easy explanation for the fact that both fitness trackers said I did more than what the GPS said. And the simple fact is, I was walking up a mountain. Now I'm doing more steps, therefore it calculates the fitness trackers a step as a distance, as a certain distance based on your height. So these, the fitness trackers will be slightly over the GPS, okay? Especially if you're walking up and down mountains. 
not too much to concern yourself with because generally most people won't be walking up a mountain. Most people will just be walking to work or walking around the park, something certainly less strenuous. If we look exclusively at the two trackers, one is 1.23, the other is 1.39. That isn't too far from each other. What's that? 1.6? 1.6. No, 0.16. That is 0.16 of a mile incorrect or difference between them. That's not a lot. And to be honest, that is a discretion that most people won't be bothered about, especially just wearing it as a general overall fitness tracker. I also found that the heart rate was pretty much accurate as well with one device saying 98 and the other saying 102. So there's actually only four points out there. And this was measured straight after the walk as well, so my heart rate is slightly elevated for that reason. On to the price. Now, it's not quite as cheap as the ID107 or the TW64 that I've reviewed previously, but that said, it's not much more. So this comes out at about the £30 mark, and I'll leave a link below in the description where you can buy it so you can have a look at that. So in conclusion, like I said, it's not quite as cheap as the other fitness trackers I bought. Is it worth the extra money? Okay, again, it's not quite as much as a Fitbit, for example, which can cost upwards of £100. But is it worth the difference in between the Fitbits and the cheaper Chinese trackers like the ID107? The answer simply is yes. This, to be honest, takes the crown. It used to be the ID107 for me, but no more. To be honest, it's worth the extra £10, £15 you might spend. One because the app is fantastic. It looks clear, it looks clean, and it just seems to work. Two, this battery life seems to have lasted me weeks. I haven't, I've charged this twice and I've had it for about three weeks. It's mad. I think it runs on nuclear power or something. I'm not sure. Um, or siphons the solar energies of the system. I don't know. Anyway, but certainly worth it. Um, I honestly cannot find a fault with this. I think it is a fantastic thing. Okay, the fault might be the design. I'm not keen on the design, but that's just me. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe, and we'll see you back soon for more reviews.